Brave, 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 brave Sir Robin! Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Zareth Prevails, folks. The GAC season is upon us, finally, after so long, and I'm really excited about that. But we've we've got <laughs> there's a lot of different factors going into this this season, and I'm, I'm very interested to see. I have three predictions for the season in general, and I, uh, you know, who knows if I'm right about them or not. I want to talk about them a little bit, and let me know in the comments what your predictions are for the season. My fourth and unofficial prediction is that tons of people are going to say that <clears throat> CG is going to mess everything up somehow. They're going to fail at everything, and I'll just say that that's a fairly unoriginal prediction, and that happens all the time that people predict things like that. So, uh, that's that's all I'll say about it. Uh, you know, maybe say something else in the comments, because I've already predicted it. <laughs> so, uh, otherwise, folks, we are actually uh, mounting the algorithm so quickly, and that's that's always, that's not always the best thing. I think the algorithm likes it, though, and <laughs> I think, I think, though, folks, we've gotten past 9k, and if we can get to 10k, I... I would be so appreciative. You guys have been amazing. If we can just hit that thumbs up button or leave a comment in the comment area that both of those help us mount the algorithm, get there faster, get more exposure for this channel. And if you can hit the sub button, if you haven't done it yet, or if you have an extra work account or something like that, hit that sub button, please. We're trying to get to 10K by the end of the year. I would truly appreciate it. So let's go to the predictions. We're actually just gonna stay right here. We're not gonna go in the game this time. Whoa, etc. So here's the prediction, number one, folks. I think that people are going to be amazed at how good Ewoks are. I think that the Chirpa Omicron is going to open a lot of people's eyes. And I don't know that for sure because we don't we don't know exactly how <laughs> how it's all gonna play out. But I think theory-wise, it's gonna be really solid. So here's here's the math of it, folks. And this is this is a I don't know. You can probably get a much faster Paplu than this. 250 is the speed of my Gear 12 Plus Zero Prevail Man Paplu. Uh, so, first, I, I'll say this. I've had three different people tell me that they are going to use Ewoks. They're putting the Omicron onto Chirpa. And that's great. That's cool. And they're going to take out Paplu because he's worthless. And instead, add 3PO. And I'm like, no, Paplu is... But, I mean, Chirpa, obviously, vital. He, you need him. But... Paplu, pa Paplu is is the reason it works, guys. It's the he's the reason the turn meter train works, and I I don't know. I'm I'm always like, man, you haven't watched any of my videos, and that's that's fine. I shouldn't expect people to do that, but I do think that if you if you watched my videos enough, you'll know that Paplu gets some crazy speed. So here's here's a 250 Paplu. This is the speed of my Prevail Man Paplu. You, you know you want to still keep him with protection and all of that if you can, but uh, 250 is fine. It's, it's relatively easy to get. My and he can also get another 22 speed on top of that once I put some put enough gear pieces on. So this is just a pretty baseline peplu. Uh, give him 30 speed for the chirp omicron. You give it, which makes him 280 speed, and then you give him another 25% of his speed, which is a pretty e pretty easily done math. It's uh, plus 70 speed, which makes your peplu 350. Now if you do that with a uh, you know. 272 speed peplu then you're gonna have at least a 372 speed peplu it, you, you can you can really start cooking guys that like, you can it is it is crazy because the thing is he'll go he's gonna call another ewok to go and they'll, they'll get in turn meter and the turn meter train isn't gonna stop now it's maybe unpredictable what exactly <clears throat> the what the turn meter train is going to look like if if your Ewoks are going to be able to bridge that gap on speed. And if they can't, then maybe it's going to be a little awkward. But I think that you're going to end up seeing them go a lot. And, I mean, with the with the Omicron and them taking so many turns because of specials and calling basics, and they do extra damage on basics, I think they're just going to go nuts. I know that uh, I have a few people who are going to be making video for me on how, you know, what the what the... Ewoks can actually do on offense, and I'm excited to see it, excited to show you guys, but I think that that, I think people aren't, aren't expecting how good Ewoks are going to be, and it's, it's a big coming out party, guys. I really want them for my main account, and I guess we'll just see 
what happens. Prediction two. People are going to proclaim Starkiller is bad when he's not actually bad. And this happens actually with every single new character that is released. Every single one that I can think of. Everyone's disappointed like crazy about the new character because you have a built in their, uh, up in their minds like, Oh my gosh, he, he brings a Star Destroyer down on people's heads. You're just going to automatically win. And I don't think that's... Uh, I'm pretty sure, in fact, that that's not going to be the case. He's going to have a really cool ultimate that's going to do a lot of damage, but I don't think that's going to just kill everything automatically, immediately. And when people don't see that that works, and then he's awkwardly tied to some certain characters like Palpatine and Mara Jade, or, you know, Darth Vader, uh, you know, he's using some of these older characters, and then he's using, like, Visa's Mar and Juhani or something random. He's going to look... Like, he's not that good. People are going to assume he's bad. Or they're going to put him on defense, and then he's going to get destroyed by something terrible. And people are going to be like, oh my gosh, look at how, look at how nice sisters beat him. That's embarrassing. He shouldn't be beat by nice sisters. And it's like, look, I don't think he's going to be a defensive character anyways. But we might find a good comp on defense. But he's going to be with so many weird characters that don't know how to use his AI. And he's going to be interacting with... With, like, outside of all the factions. There's going to be five different factions just hanging out there. And I just... I'm cringing so hard because people said that Bando forever. The Bando isn't a good character. It's the worst legendary ever. And he's really good. You can't expect the world from him. But he keeps being on really, really awesome teams. And if people don't know how to use someone, it doesn't mean that they're bad, it just means we don't know how to use them yet. We don't know what the best team comp is, and frankly, the people who are going to be buying him and testing him are only a couple people. Like, you know, CG is always, people accuse CG of not testing their teams and not knowing, you know, the right the right combination of things and, the, you know, if things being broken uh, because, because they don't test their game and, you know, they can't test it because there are a limited number of people who can test it. But the, the issue also is once we get Starkiller and people all cracking out, there's going to have, there's going to be a very limited number of people who can play test things. And I, I don't necessarily trust the limited sample size that people can play test it in. I, I remember distinctly when, <laughs> when, they, when Emperor Palpatine first came out and there were a bunch of the Game Changer guys and they spent like the whole weekend with the kit without being able to, without the player base being able to play other than just the Game Changers and the Game Changers uh, played and they're like, sorry guys, Palpatine isn't going to beat the meta. He sucks. He's not good. And then the first day that Palpatine was released, then people, you know, like his rework was released, people were like, no, he beats the meta, you just weren't doing it right. And that the thing is, it's not shade at the game changers, well, maybe a little, but uh, it's shade, it's, it's more like there's a limited number of people who can test it initially. And so people are going to proclaim he's bad. When he's not, they're going to expect things that he shouldn't have to be. It shouldn't have to meet some of these standards, but people are going to think he's bad when, and he's going to end up being very good just in non-obvious ways initially. Uh, prediction number three, and this is already coming true, but I, I predicted it to a bunch of people beforehand, so I guess I'm just going to keep it. I think that people are going to proclaim loudly, riotously, uh, and quit in some cases because the matchmaking is a failure. And I don't think it's a failure. I think it's people not understanding how the system works and how, uh, especially in Division 1, people are getting some crazy matches. Some people who, who have like, you know, 7.2 million or whatever uh, GP are getting paired with people who have 9 million, 10 million GP. And that's that sucks. That's a mismatch. It's not cool. And eventually it's all going to sort itself out. We're all going to be in the right place. But I think people don't understand exactly how it's all going to pan out. People are going to all jump in. to the. We're all in the same pool right now. Now the, the talent pool is crazy. Everyone's going to be destroying each other. Some people are just going to be swatting smaller accounts, etc. And eventually matchmaking is going to get us to where we need to be. But initially, yeah, it's going to seem like it sucks. I mean, they've, they've made no bones about it. It's going to be a struggle for people with lower level accounts, uh, just uh, at least in Division 1, because that's how the matchmaking goes. And 
then if everyone everyone's eventually going to get pushed into whatever the next bracket they need to be in, you know, whether they uh, increase or decrease or whatever. And I don't know, I'm, I'm very interested to see the skill. The skill thing is, is very interesting to me. So I, I do think that people are going to say that the matchmaking is broken and who knows, maybe it is, who, we're not sure, but I think that people are gonna proclaim it as just ridiculous and stupid and not working the way CG intended. Uh, from the day from day one and not give it a, a chance and i think that that's speaking from ignorance or willful stubbornness so i don't know uh, let me know what you guys think what am, am i wrong am i right i would love to hear your comments be respectful but i would love to hear you what what, what are your predictions this season too i want to hear what do you expect what are you going to do how how are you going to play it thank you all so much for watching and remember that in all things xerath prevails